evening. Welcome to 100% LCFC. My name is Phil. This is the Monday Night Fan Zone. We are starting to do it a bit earlier every week now. It's going to be from 7.30 until 8. So welcome everybody who is watching. Get your views in, get your comments in. Obviously, it's been a very, very good week for Leicester City. Anthony Howard is watching. Anthony, get your views in. What did you think to Saturday's performance? Matthew Bond is watching. Again, we're live on Facebook and Twitter tonight. Pete Hides, Hades, Hides, sorry Pete. Thank you for watching. And Matthew Bond, Andy Medhurst, lots of hellos. I can add people into the video chat this evening, so we could do a bit of that. Ian Lang is watching. Hi Ian, how are you? What did you reckon to the result? Yes, Jordan, sorry, what time do you call this? We are going early now, 7.30. It's getting darker, so we thought we'd do the shows a bit earlier. And I know you all like to watch Love Island or Peaky Blinders, whatever is on on a Monday at 9. Good evening to you. Steve Toon, how are you, Toonie? Um, and Jason Mills, lots. Brett Coombs, hi, Brett, how are you? Paul Spilling says, brilliant game and atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere was better on Saturday. It helps when there's an exciting game as well, doesn't it? But that really was um, one of the best games in probably, I mean, I'm thinking back to last season, really enjoyed the Arsenal 3-0 that we did, but there was probably more in that Spurs game with the 2-1, with the fact that we were 1-0 down. We were 2-0 down. I love it. People put some comments on social media yesterday saying Spurs are the only team to be to lose 2-1 after being 2-0 up. So... Uh, Andy Medhurst says, why are we a second half team at the moment? We are a bit sluggish still. We've been like this for a while, Andy, haven't we? A bit slow out of the um, blocks. I like this one. Jordan, Jordan Williams saying, James Madison's sexual strike. Calm down, Jordan, but it was good. And to be fair, I think most of us, well, no, I'm going to say this. Most of us didn't. I think it was a very split decision on who was man of the match I gave it to Madison I just think you score a goal like that and he played very very well as well I think Madison has to win man of the match although having watched some of the highlights again back on match of the day etc I can see why people were going for Soyun Coop because he looked after the defence with and Johnny Evans as well put in a big performance so well done to Johnny Evans well done to Kaglar Soyun Coop looking uh, just where is this coming from is the question Obviously, when we bought him Turkish International, we didn't see much of it last season. Looking very calm. There was one bit where he did in the... This was in the first half. He, he did a little back, back heel turn in his own penalty box, sent the Spurs player flying. What a revelation Sayonku has been. Don't forget, if you're watching on Facebook, I can add you into the stream if you want to come on and chat. So if you want to do that, just say add me in. I can add you in. We're happy to get fans in. Um, I'll keep reading out all your comments. Paul Spilling saying Madison was limping badly today. I haven't seen him today, obviously, or seen anything, Paul, but um, I highly expect, and this will be one of the things we want to talk about, is what is going to be the starting 11 at Luton. So start putting your comments in there, who you think is going to start for Leicester against Luton. Um, Paul is saying that he saw Madison was limping badly today. Not read too much about it. He certainly looked all right in his post-match against, um, for man of the match, sorry, for match of the day at the end. Adam Tucker is saying we need to play every game like it's uh, a second half. I see what you're saying there. Tim True is saying, just me or was Sissoko lucky to be on the field after that tackle on Madison uh, not really been mentioned? No, I think, uh, to be fair, Tim, I think the reason that's not been mentioned is there was so many other incidents in that match. Uh, we, we were about 20 minutes into the match and we said, that this is the sort of match where there's going to be a penalty there's going to be a red card. Ironically, there was neither, but there was pretty much everything else that we weren't expecting as well. Uh, Chris Allen is saying Chilwell's improved finally. I thought Chilwell had a good game. I know quite a few people have been a bit critical of Chilwell, but he was left very exposed down that left-hand side. I'm not quite sure who he was covering, why he was covering, but there was often two Spurs players coming down and overlapping against Ben Chilwell. So I thought he had a good game in there. Uh, Anthony Howard is saying Madison controlled the midfield. He certainly did. Madison's got to be a number 10, hasn't he? We're all saying this now. Don't stick him out on the wing. He's got to play that number 10 role. Really plays well. Uh, Craig Rowley saying, are we offering Madison's bag as a prize? No, I hear it was very expensive. He's also had quite a bit of stick for his bag. What, you, what was it, a six grand bag? Plastic, 
looks a bit like a plastic bag, if you ask me. Um, Brett Coombs is saying, we've all heard the Sonku song, but after Saturday, can we all agree he has the biggest <laughs> tink-tonk in the Premier League? Brett, that is unknown whether he has or he hasn't, but he certainly was playing like he'd got uh, big kahunas or whatever you want to say. Chris Allen is saying, do we give Rudkin praise for this Sonku signing? Yes, Chris, why not? Why not give Rudkin praise for that? Because, honestly, fans slate Rudkin, John Rudkin, when he gets it wrong. And trust me, whoever's signing players at Leicester certainly has got some wrong signings over the last three or four years. We can list them, can't we? Slimani, Musa, Mende, Silva, Ibora. You know, the list can go on with the ones that have failed. But give him his dues. James Madison has done fantastic. Ricardo Pereira, what a goal on Saturday. Well done to him. That was brilliant to see him. Uh, Sayunku coming good. We, we all thought it was going to be Benkovic, I think, this season, didn't we? He was going to come through. But Sayunku's coming through. Benkovic not, not got a minute's uh, league time yet. Uh, Joanna's watching. Hi, Joanna. Did you go on Saturday? What did you think to the game? Let me know. Um, Paul Spilling saying he arrived at the training ground today, but he was limping. Jason Mills. Oh, here we go. VAR. We've got to talk about VAR a little bit. I want your comments on it. Jason says VAR is going to completely write this season off. Said it before a ball was kicked that it's going to destroy the game. I've got to be fair, Jason. I'm afraid I totally agree with you. On Saturday, as a paying fan, paying the money to sit in the stand, VAR does spoil the game. Mostly, not, not because it's trying to make the right decision which it is trying to make the right decision. But it's just, that I've said it before, the communication to us fans, it's, it, it feels like in the ground they're just going, you, you fans can sod off because we're not going to give you any information. You just, we don't, you don't know what's going on. They don't even tell you after the decision's been made. I think at one point it flashed up for a split second, um, a line or a replay. I didn't see it. Somebody said, oh, it's just flashed it up there. But for like two seconds... Communication was terrible. And to be fair, I'm going to be honest, I think we were very lucky with their goal being ruled offside. If that's how VAR is going to be used, I think our goal was offside according to the rules. First phase, second phase. You know, I think you've, our goal, Perez was clearly a yard or so offside. And that, that for me, VAR worked well. If that's if they're going to adjudicate the rules. Um, but their goal, really, come on, we were lucky with that. Would you agree or not? I mean... That, that is not offside to me at all. But And if that's how VAR is going to be used, then we, it just spoils the game a little bit. But anyway, uh, Andy Meadow saying, Man United is ready to offer £80 million for Sionku plus Maguire. Harry's not having such a great time there, is he? Adam Tucker saying, uh, full 11 change for the cup game for him. Uh, put a lot of put a lot into the Spurs game. Keep them ready for Newcastle. I think a lot of it... Do you know what with you, Adam... I'm starting to go with you on that. I'm starting to think, look, I think, uh, I'm not saying change all 11, but I think players who could come in tomorrow, start at the back. Danny Ward, we've seen nothing wrong from Danny Ward in goal. He could go in goal for me. Um, James Justin could go in at fullback. Christian Fuchs could go in. Uh, Wes Morgan could go in. Who else? Maybe Benkovic. I know this is wholesale changes. And then in midfield, you could certainly play Hamza Chowdhury. Only played 15 minutes, 20 minutes on Saturday. Uh, Mark Albright and Dennis Prayat. We're having arguments on whether you say it as Prayat or Pratt. Will Moyer and Will, if you're ever watching, or John O'Wade, told me categorically, well, one says it's it's Dennis Prayat and another says it's Dennis Pratt. I'm, I'll go with Prayat because that's what Will said it was and I'll take his judgment. Anyway, they could come in. Damari Gray could play. We could put in eleven a, a fresh eleven, like Adam says. And to be fair, we should beat Luton. And I'm not being boastful or big-headed. We're the big Premier League I am. I hate that. I hate it when we used to be in the Championship and you think, oh look, here comes such and such. They think they can do us. I want us to win the League Cup. So, got to be careful. Uh, Evans was incredible, says Brett Coombs. Love watching him take Kane out. Oh, what a tackle that was! Right on the halfway line. Um, their players started to like moan, but it was a perfect tackle and took him out very nicely. Neil Birchenough is saying, Fuchs, Chowdhury, all Brighton, all to start, and probably Morgan agreeing with me there. Neil, would you have more than that, though? Would you have Danny Ward in goal or would you have Casper? Listen, let's, let's, let's start with that, Danny Ward or Casper. If you want, if you think you'd put Danny Ward in goal tomorrow, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. If you want to keep Casper in goal, give us a heart, okay? 
Like for Danny Ward, heart for Casper. I can see them coming up on the screen. You guys can. We can see what you fans think. Who should go in goal? Let's start with that. Loads of, well, a bit of a mixed bag. There's more likes, which is for Danny Ward coming through. Quite a few hearts coming up saying keep Casper in. I've, I've got no problem myself with Danny Ward going in goal tomorrow. Uh, a lot of you are agreeing. A few saying Casper, obviously. We know Casper's number one, but Danny Ward's not let us down in the Cup games last season. Did very well, in fact. And by looking at the likes that are going up there, 90% of you are saying put Danny Ward in. So we'll, we'll move on to other players during this chat and see which ones you think we should put in. But the likes, the hearts, it's definitely 90% of you are going for likes, saying Danny Ward go in there. A few saying keep Casper. So that's one position us fans are saying, yeah, we'd be happy enough with a change. Uh, Joanna's saying Madison wasn't scared to take on Sissoku. He certainly wasn't. Anthony Howard saying, did anyone else think Tielemans looked a bit unfit? Did you think Tielemans looked a bit unfit? I thought that was that was perhaps the best I've seen Tielemans this season, but it was still not the Tielemans we saw last season, Anthony, was it? What do you think to that? Get your views in. Andy Medhurst comes in and says, what is going on with Tielemans at the moment? Uh, please keep getting your comments in. I'm going to scoot that. So many comments coming in, which is brilliant. If you can like and share the video as ever, appreciate that, or retweet it and heart it, that would be brilliant. Um, and I'm going to move on to some of the later comments. Chappers, hope you had a good birthday, Chappers. Lee Chapman is saying, an insane game at the weekend. Uh, Tielemans is still not showed up for me yet. I thought, Chappers, I thought Tielemans, that was better that's probably the best I've seen Yuri this season. But it, if Yuri was performing at 90 to 100% or 9 out of 10s last season, I think it was still only a 6 or 7 out of 10 from Yuri this week. I think if he wasn't, if we hadn't bought him for £40 million, I think he would have been dropped by now and given, brought somebody else in. Maybe Pratt, maybe or Brighton. What did you think to Dennis Pratt when he came on? Um... I thought that was a great, I'm not going to say cameo, because he came on for 15, 20 minutes, but that was like Simon Mack, who was with me watching it. Simon said, a uh, great report, by the way. If you haven't read it, go on LeicesterFanTV.com, read Simon's post-match review of the game. But Simon said he thought he'd seen enough from Pratt uh, on Saturday that he wants to see a lot more of him. Thinks that he's going to slot in. Nacho to start tomorrow's and bag a brace. Where is Nacho? He wasn't even on the bench on Saturday. You'll have to forgive me. I don't, don't spend long looking for him, but is he injured? Why was Nacho not on the bench on Saturday? Let me know what you know about Nacho. Is he injured? I'm really not up to date on what, what his fitness level. I don't know why, how he's got injured if he is injured. I mean, he might have a splinter in his backside from sitting on the bench, but... Cool. And that's Phil bringing out the old jokes from old times, for any of you who don't know that sort of stuff. Uh, Andy Price saying, Pratt seems to lack pace, but he's okay for me. Yeah, I think it's not about pace for Andy Pratt. That's not what his game is. Um, Jason says, I've crashed. I know, I think I'm back now. I think I'm back, Jason. I saw, I saw it was going. Don't forget, if you want to be added in, I can add some of you in. If any of you want to come in on screen, I think I can add some of you in. So just say, I'm in. Uh, Gray Richardson, Gray, thanks for joining, says, Evening, Phil. Sorry for late joining. Gray, you're not late. I'm just early. New show time, 7.30 till 8. Sorry for those of you who like Coronation Street, but that's when we're going to be doing it from this week on. Uh, Brett, I have to read your comments in my head before I read them out, just to check. But Brett making jokes about Thomas Cook. Let's affirm, Brett, come on. Um, keep it clean. Jordan saying here Nacho is the best at FIFA in the whole squad. I don't know if you're joking, Jordan, but I wouldn't be surprised. He's had enough time to practice, put it this way. Gray is saying, has anyone mentioned Johnny Evans' tackle on Kane? Gray, if you'd come in earlier, yes, we have. What a great tackle it was. It's worth watching again, isn't it? Also, we've mentioned uh, Sionku's back heel turn in his own penalty area to dumbfound uh, the Spurs player. I can't remember which Spurs player it was. Uh, Jordan Williams saying, it's the truth about Nacho Madison, said it in an interview. Well, we all know what, if we want, when we're playing FIFA eSports, Leicester City, um, Nacho's got to be the man. But where was he on Saturday? Why is Nacho not even on the bench? 
That's a big question. Anthony Howard saying, how did Kane score that goal? Fair play, Anthony, to Harry Kane. I didn't know. I've watched it several times, and I'm trying to convince myself he was just jammy. He was tripping over, and he fell over. But he didn't. He did mean it. He is a good player. The Toyota scored it. He's one of the best strikers in the world. Dave, sorry, Daz Stockwin. Hi, Daz says, I think Sonku is going to be a Leicester City great. Well, Daz, check back in 12 months or two years when Sionku has lifted the League Cup and got us into Europe and a top four finish. And then you can come back and say, I told you so. And Matthew Bond saying, take Nacho to Luton and leave him there. Matthew, come on. Hey, listen, if, if Nacho plays tomorrow, we all want him to score. Brett saying, do I play FIFA? Yes, I do, Brett, but very badly. Uh, Sean is saying, VAR league table needed to see who would be where at the end of the season. Jason Mills is saying, no way Kane meant that guy. He did, Jason. Honestly, he meant that. I think he did mean it. He was falling. His eyes were on the ball all the way, and he did just get a toe to it. He, he slashed out. Fair play. I, it probably would have been either a penalty or a free kick. I think VAR would have shown that it, it could have been a, a free kick. Because I think Soyuncu, quite, quite understandably, was trying to take uh, Kane out, but just outside the area. Daz is saying that's a deal. Not sure what Daz is talking about. Jordan saying, what for which I better go ahead hearing difficulties on sorting it. Definitely hearing that, Jordan, that there is some difficulties. Listen, I, you know, I, the what for which I, whether it's official or unofficial, I don't think there's much stopping fans meeting in Jubilee Square and walking to the ground. Crikey. I meet other fans in other places and walk to the ground. I think they'll have to sort it because I think there'll be enough people think like me and go, right, well, we're going we're gonna to walk that way. We don't, you know, it's just a walk to the ground. So I think they will have to sort it, Jordan, to be fair, because I think there will be enough people who just think like me and say, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Andy Price saying they had Barnes playing a more central striker role at times in the second half. They certainly did, Andy, didn't they? I, li I quite liked it with Barnes. I'd never really... Considered whether it be a striker or not. Last season he had so many chances. What was it, 30 chances before, or 30 attempts on goal last season before he scored his first goal. But hey, listen, he's a young lad. Could be a striker in the make, making. I don't think he. I don't think he is because if you look in the squad list, they have him down as a midfielder. Um, so, but who knows? Um, Thierry Henry was a winger, wasn't he? Before he got moved up front, it's happened to a few strikers. So. Maybe it could do. Aggie is watching. Hi, Aggie. Aggie, thanks for that. Saying, don't think he's been on the bench since the Wolves match. Forgot what he looked like. Talking about, I'm assuming, Nacho. John Squires is predicting Nacho will score all three goals tomorrow. John, get down the bookies. You'll get 5,000 to 1 on that happening. you probably get 100 to 1 on Nacho starting, to be fair, let alone scoring a goal. It's probably 100 for 1 for him to start. 250 to 1 to score a goal. I'm only joking. I hope if he starts, we cheer him. We need him to win. Uh, Chappers is saying he'll join in. Let me see if I can add Chappers in. Oh, Lee, 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 Lee. I shall keep talking and see if I can add you in. Lee, it won't let me add you in for some reason. Some fans I can add in. They've got green little things next to them. Chappers, you're not one of them. Sorry about that, mate. Um... Keep getting your comments in. Let's, I'll tell you what, we've done Casper and we've gone Danny Ward. Let's pick another one. Who could we go for here? Uh, let's go right up to the other end of the pitch. Let's go for striker. Now, Jamie Vardy, he's on form, he's playing well. Do you carry on with Jamie Vardy against Luton? Do you let him score some goals? Or do you give him a bit of a rest? He's 32, 33. Do you let him have a rest, come back firing for Newcastle? Do you put Jamie Vardy, a well-earned rest on the bench? If we need him, he can have 30, 40 minutes at the end. If we don't, again, plan B's, if we don't play Jamie Vardy at front, who would you play at front now? I'm going to, it's either Nacho or Perez. Nacho's not even been on the bench. I think I'm going to give you the choice between who would you play. I don't know whether to go for Perez. Put in the comments, who should it be? Vardy or Perez, Vardy or Nacho? I, I think... I think I'm going to say, if you think it's going to be Jamie Vardy, give us a heart. And if you think it's going to be Nacho, give us a like. 
not that you necessarily like it to happen, but do you think it, it? Do you think we should give Nacho a run out, or do you think we should stick with Jamie Vardy? I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit torn. A few likes coming in already for Nacho. Before before we were suddenly in the top four in the Premier League, I was very much the cups, the cups away. But I'm already sensing that. Keep those emojis coming in. Loads of love hearts. More love hearts for Jamie Vardy than give Nacho up some time. Um, so more of you are going for Jamie Vardy to stay on. Listen, my logic was that top six would be great this season. But look at the teams who are struggling this season. And we called it before the season start. We said, look, Chelsea have got the transfer embargo. Uh, Frank Lampard's managed Derby to a playoff final and lost not really got lots of managerial skill and got his hands tied and trying to play with youngsters. So they're going to have three steps forward and two steps back, which is what Chelsea look like they're doing. Chelsea are definitely going to be around the top six, but not necessarily in the top six this season. And, and most of their lot will take and say, well, it's been a tough season. Loads of you, do, most of you are doing love hearts for Jamie Vardy. So the fans are saying, stick with Jamie Vardy up top, not Nacho or even Perez. But listen, Chelsea may well drop out that top six and certainly may well ch- drop out the top four. Man United, like we guessed, when we were all saying Harry Maguire, if you're going to go anywhere, don't go Man United, apart from for the money and, and being one of the world's biggest clubs. But it wasn't necessarily the season to go to Man United and they are in a mess. Man United have got every chance of not being in the top four, maybe not even being in the top six. Then you look at Arsenal, throwing points away against Watford, uh, n- not necessarily playing very well. So Arsenal could certainly not be in the top four and could be in the lower bits of the top six, maybe outside the top six. That's three teams so far. And then we've just played Spurs and we've just beat Spurs. And again, they've got Champions League commitment, Spurs have. They didn't sign that many players in the summer. Their squad's a bit light. Spurs could easily be finished third, fourth, fifth, or even sixth this season. That's four teams we've just mentioned out the top six. So, okay, we're only six games in. Any one of those four teams, in my books, could drop out the top four, the top six, and suddenly you you think the door is starting to just creep a little bit open for Leicester. Do you agree? Do you think... I'm So, hence, I'm starting to change my viewpoint on the Cups and the league because I'm really starting to fancy that we could do something in the league. Adam Tucker is saying Vardy will not play tomorrow. I, I think he won't. I'm, I'm with you on that, Adam. So, but who would you put on, Adam? If, if you think Vardy's not going to, I've said Nacho. I don't know. He's not even been on the bench. It seems a big ask for him to come in from nowhere. Gray is saying, let him score. Vardy will, all, will always fire. Jake's saying, Jake Short is saying, with Pratt and Chowdhury starting on the bench, most games, would you sell Mendy in January? Um, no, I wouldn't sell anybody in January if we can keep hold of them because I think it's a squad game. Sprett is saying, yes, yes, start Vardy because I have him in my dream team. Yeah, I've got him in my dream. I don't think dream team points count in the League Cup, Brett. I don't think they do, do they? How is your fantasy teams doing anyway? Samantha Clifford is watching. Hi, Samantha. Thanks for watching. Get your comments in, Samantha. Let me know what your thoughts to Saturday and what you think about... Tomorrow's game, a few of you saying Jake Short and Leslie Gill are both saying start Perez. Jason Mills saying why not play a front two of Perez and Nacho. Could be interesting. Gray is saying Nacho not worthy of polishing his boots. Andy Medhurst is saying play Perez and Gray up front. I think Gray could well start tomorrow because he only came on and did well. Demari Gray did well for 15 minutes, did well against Bournemouth for the 15, 20 minutes, did poor against Man United. Whenever he gets a start, I don't know what it is with Demari Gray. It's like, give him 15, 20 minutes and he comes on and looks hungry and he's like, I want to show you that I can start. Then you give him the start and it's like, "Mm, not bothered. What is it with Demari Gray? Why is he so frustrating like that? Chappers is saying this week's podcast, Chappers does a brilliant podcast every week. And he's saying it's going to be available earlier this week. It's going to be tomorrow. And it's got the Magpie channel on it. And it's also up on YouTube. Fantastic. Chappers podcast. I hope you listen to it. It's a great show every week. It's free, as is everything we do. It's free. 
It's on iTunes, so subscribe to the 100% LCFC podcast. It's also on SoundCloud, and it's also on LeicesterFanTV.com forward slash podcasts. There you go, chappers. I've given you a massive plug for the fantastic weekly podcast. Scott Ryan, hello to you. Thanks for watching. Andy Young says, get Perez and Gray up front. Ben Wasley. Wasley? Am I saying that right, Ben? Ben says, and I 100% agree with you, Ben. Shame we bottled it against United. It is. That United game is really annoying me, especially when you saw them against West Ham yesterday. I'm there going... We really, really, really could have beaten them. Don't forget, if you want to come on live into the video, I can add you in. If you just say, add me, I will try. Brian Marshall is saying, Chelsea top six from bottom. Yeah, could be. James Hall is saying, push for top four for me. Chappers is saying, dilly dong, dilly ding, dilly dong. We're in Champions League, man. Come on. I should have done that in my best... Um, Claudio Ranieri, hey, dilly dong, dilly dang, man, we are in Champions League, man. That didn't sound like him, did it? Shall I not do any more impressions? Lee Chappard says again, Nacho is done. William Robinson saying, start Perez. Uh, Rob McFarl McFar McFarlane, sorry, Rob, I don't know if I'm saying that right, saying, Sonku up top main man. Scott is saying, Premier League winners 19 to 20. I'm not ruling it out. I'm not ruling it out. I think this season Man City and Liverpool are going to be... I mean, Liverpool are just flying, aren't they? But trust me, we could... We, I started the season thinking we could make that top six. I'm starting to think we could be the best of the rest. From what I've seen of... Could we beat Arsenal? Yes. Could we beat Spurs? We've just done it. Should we have beaten Man United? Yes. And that's where we need to improve because not, not only should we, we should have done. Um... Chelsea, we've got a draw away at, you know, could be best of the rest. West Ham could be hard this season, by the looks of it, but we could certainly be the best of the rest. Uh, Brett is saying the Suns' dream team, uh, Luton, does count. Oh, I play fantasy football, it's Brett, which is, so I'm not sure if that's in it. Uh, Paul is saying no points for the League Cup, so he's probably playing the same one as me. James Hill says Madison was a beast on Saturday, he certainly was. I thought he can play brilliantly. James says, James Holt says, I don't think we are playing our potential just yet, but on our day we can beat anyone and push for the top four. Just got to carry this on, haven't we? Get as many points. A bit like Claudio Ranieri did, you say. Let's get to 40 points as quickly as possible, and then we can all relax and we can all just enjoy and see where the season unfolds. Teams will not want to play us, will they? Neil is agreeing with me. Neil Birchinoff saying, Gray never plays well for 90 minutes. He's an impact player only. I agree with you, Greg. That's that's what my opinion of Damari Gray is now. Good to come on from the bench. Good to come on from the bench. Aggressive. Twenty. I mean, he was booked within ninety seconds, but you know that was great. So, Steve Toon saying Gray looks better against tiring players. Could be right. That could be what it is. William Robinson saying six nil on the weekend. Perez first goal score against Newcastle are rubbish. It is going to be interesting. I think what we're going to do is, obviously, the game is on Sunday. We've got tomorrow night's game. We'll be doing more lives this week. Chappers goes live with his Fox in the Box show every Wednesday about 8 o'clock. Neil and James do the Kit Room, which is now on YouTube, our YouTube channel. So have a look. Any of you who do go on YouTube, subscribe to 100% LCFC on YouTube. And that will be live on there, and we'll share that on here. Um, and... Obviously, Jamie's Fox's Aftermath show on Sunday morning is going to be a Fox's pre-math show this year, this week, sorry. So join Jamie. And by the way, well done to, I think it was Heather. Jamie gave away, he got a ticket for the Newcastle game. He gave that away in the live video this morning. If you haven't watched that, scroll down the page and have a look at that earlier. Uh, last few comments. Before we have to go, what is it, 8 o'clock nearly? Oh, it is 8 o'clock, so time to go. Don't forget, on the website, we're giving away. We've got a pink Leicester Adidas shirt to give away, thanks to our pals at Pink. We've got some Tiger beer, thanks to Everard's to give away. Again, competitions on LeicesterFanTV.com. We've just announced yesterday our selfie competition winner, which was Steve Forget your second name, Steve, but I've been emailing him. He's won, thanks to all these guys, a £50 voucher in the club shop. And we have got a new competition, which I'm going to set tomorrow, which is 
Uh, you have to just guess what's in the bag. I went and bought some stuff, thanks to all these guys who gave us a bit of cash. I went into the club shop today and I bought something. And it's a what's in the bag. It's going to be live on the website tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, as ever, to Pink Vehicle Leasing, ADT, Emergency Glazing Services, Peter's Pizzas, Everard's, The Fox's Arms, Hologram, Harlow Geek Life, and... Not thanks to, but go follow all of them, and especially Bodie Hodges as well, local charity. Thanks to all those guys. But mostly, thanks to everybody who's been watching. Thanks to Scott Ryan, Jake Short, Jason Till, Scott Ryan, Matthew Bond, Lesson Freer, Neil Birchinoff, Chappers, Brett Coombs, Brian Marshall, uh, Josh Wilson. So many of you who've been watching, liking, sharing the videos. Uh, getting your comments in. Sorry, I can't read every single one out. Adam Tucker's just saying, what's that a Jamaican Claudio? I think it was, Adam. I need to either go and practice my impressions or stop doing them. Anyway, for me, Phil, 100% LCFC. Thanks to all the sponsors. Thanks to you guys watching on all the channels for all your comments and all your views. I'll see you soon. Cheers.